You're listening to Financial Advisor Marketing, the best show on the planet for financial advisors who want to get more clients without all the stress. You're about to get the real scoop on everything from lead generation to closing the deal. James is the founder of TheAdvisorCoach.com, where you can find an entire suite of products designed to help financial advisors grow their businesses more rapidly than ever before. Now, here is your host, James Pollard. Financial advisors, welcome back. I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad you're listening to me. I'm glad you're still with me. Glad you haven't given up on me. And actually, if you, if you stop listening to the podcast, you really aren't giving up on me. You're giving up on yourself. So you keep that in mind. If you ever, ever think about leaving me, <laughs> I'm going, going psycho girlfriend on you here now, pulling the knife, <laughs> pulling the knife out. If you ever think about leaving me and leaving my podcast, <laughs> I'm coming for you. Today's show is about why your experience doesn't matter. And the inspiration I got from this is because I send out emails all the time. Like every day I send financial advisors an email, at least to my main email list. I have sub lists and all that that they go through on their own, but I email my main list every day. And one of the emails I sent, which got opened, I think it was like the second, no, it wasn't the second. I think it was like the third or fourth highest open rates ever was why your certifications don't matter. I was like, wow, you know, a lot of people are responding to this. So I sent another email saying why your experience doesn't matter. And a lot of people open, a lot of people engage with it. And I was like, maybe I'm on to something here. Because I speak nothing but the truth in my emails. And so I figured I, I wanted to do a podcast talking about it. I want to talk about why financial advisors, why their certifications, why their experience doesn't matter as much as they think it does. Now, Jonathan, have you ever encountered someone who believes that just because they know a lot of stuff that they should be successful? That was, uh, that was the thing in real estate. They, they would get all those designations and their business card would be full of them and they didn't know how to market a damn property. Yeah. yeah. And it's sad when it happens because their intentions are good. You know, these are not bad people. It's just that they, they, they have the wrong data. They believe something that just isn't true. They believe having all the information and reading all the books and being a professor of finance, that's what I call them. <laughs> they, they, I, I don't mean that. It's not like a derogatory thing. It's just so people know that the, the, the professor of finance is just the best way I could think of to describe it. I, I guess <laughs> if I think of something better, I could change it. But right now, that's like when I say professor of finance, that's what I mean. I mean the people who have all the knowledge and all the certifications, but they struggle with the marketing. And, and a lot of people believe that that stuff is going to make them more money and it's dumb. And my uncle, actually, my uncle was not a financial advisor, but he did have his own business. Actually, he had several businesses, but one of them was much more successful than all the rest like combined. So he had one business, essentially, and he used to hire people all the time. And it was, it was like a high turnover business, kind of, sort of, and, but he was in front of people all the time. And after like a year, six months, somewhere along there, uh, people would ask for more money because they had more experience. And some people would ask every year. And it, on a yearly basis, they'd be like, okay, I've got three years of experience. I want to raise. Or they'd be like, I've got five years of experience. I want to raise. My uncle would ask these people, he would say, do you have five years of experience or do you have one year of experience repeated five times? And I thought that was brilliant. And that I, I've noticed that. I, I used to work jobs back in, when I was in college. I used to work at a casino. And a lot of people don't know this about me, but I did. I worked at a casino. And if you're an Inner Circle member, if you, you're, you're getting my print and ink newsletter delivered to your door every single month packed with marketing information. Uh, one of the things that I discuss maybe two or three times a year is some, some of the things you can learn from casino marketing because it's something that I was involved with on a regular basis you know, throughout my, not formative years, you got to be, <laughs> be 21 to even go into a casino, but I guess for me, 21 and up <laughs> was my formative years. <laughs> Late but, bloomer. Yeah, and people would tell me certain things and they, they would complain. They say, like, I've been at this casino the, the people working there, not the gamblers, they'd be like, I've been at this casino for 10 years. And I've been doing such and such. I have been putting food out at this buffet <laughs> for 10 years. 
and they still won't pay me no more. <laughs> well, how, I mean, how skilled can you get? And I'm not knocking people who work at buffets or anything, but I mean, how skilled can you get? How, how much more advanced can you get with your skills at the buffet? But anyway, I thought that was brilliant how my uncle would basically say that. And a lot of financial advisors, they act that way. They get all of this experience and they, they know all of these things, but they still can't get clients. So they say that they have five years of experience and five years of knowledge, but the truth is they only have one year of marketing experience. They, they only know one or two things versus the hundreds of things that they could have learned in those five years where they were hitting the books and becoming professors of finance. They could have learned a lot of marketing strategies and they could have helped a lot of people. So yeah, it's just something to think about. Now, Jonathan, I'm going to go into this podcast. Have you ever heard the story about Joshua Bell, the violinist? I don't think so. Well, this guy was, or is, still is, one of the world's best musicians. And he's a master on the violin. This guy, he sells out theaters, orchestras, like shows all over the world. Like he is like a master. And one day he played in a subway station. I think it was Washington, D.C. And he got virtually no attention. And he even used a violin that was worth like three or four million dollars. So he's got this super expensive violin, wow. one of the best in the world. He's playing one of the best pieces of music you can possibly play. And he is one of the best musicians on the planet. So you've got triple best there, you know, and best nobody, cute. yeah, nobody paid attention to him. He was playing and playing. I think one lady gave him like a dollar. <laughs> something. He's like, or another lady might've given him like a fiver or something like that. It goes a long way towards paying for that violin. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, like this guy is legitimately playing his heart out and super talented guy and people don't care. They just kept walking. They didn't appreciate it. They kept on moving. And the moral of this story, because I, I always try to tie morals into my story. Right? <laughs> Financial advisors should have morals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and my story should have morals too. But the moral is people don't recognize talent unless you explicitly tell them. Hey, financial advisors, are you ready to take your business to the next level and get more clients with less stress? I invite you to join the James Pollard Inner Circle, a paper and ink newsletter that gets delivered directly to your door every month. When you join now, you'll also get a 90-minute instant download called Five Keys to Success for Financial Advisors, a $97 value for absolutely free. All you have to do is head over to theadvisorcoach.com forward slash newsletter and join today. You're a really good you know, podcaster, producer, but nobody would work with you if you didn't tell them, Jonathan. I better get on that. <laughs> nobody would work with you if, you if you didn't tell them and let the world know. And, and I don't want to get too off track, but there are some financial advisors that they believe that being modest and being humble and not marketing themselves is a good thing. What? Yeah. It, no, it, way, it, no way, no way, no way. They believe that not getting their message out and not helping people. <laughs> these, these people need help. Like if people, if, if you're a corporate executive and you're on call pretty much 24 seven and you've got your 401k and all this money in your portfolio and you've got the bonuses and the corporate options, like you're not paying attention to that. You're paying attention to your job. You need someone to look after your money. You need someone to help you with your financial situation. You need somebody to ensure that your children are taken care of. You need somebody to make sure that your grandchildren like know the grandfather's name, like leave him something. You, you need to make sure. And there are people out there that can help you, financial advisors out there that can help you with this. But they, they, they can never make the connection that in order to spread their value, in order to make a difference in the world, they have to market. You they think they feel like it's bragging, James? They do. They do feel like it's bragging. And obviously in financial services, you cannot brag about like investment returns, you can't brag about like, you know, past performance or you obviously can't guarantee anything. You have to be very careful as a financial advisor and you have to tiptoe around compliance. But that does not mean that if you work specifically with dentists and you're helping dentists and you're making a difference in a dentist's lives, it doesn't mean that you can't go out and get more. It doesn't mean that you can't go out and let other dentists know, hey, you know, I'm a guy who works with people just like you and I help people and I make a difference. Let's 
and get together. You know, you're a dentist. I'm a financial advisor who works with dentists. Let's get this thing moving. That's essentially what it is. Now, the, the guy, the, the reason I brought up the guy with the violin, the Joshua Bell, is the, the, it's one of the biggest keys to success as a financial advisor because if this guy got no applause, got nothing, what makes you think you're going to get people coming to you unless you actively market? Like people think that they could just sit back and coast and relax and they think that it's bragging or they think that, you know, they're too big for the britches or whatever. Somebody said that to me, but it's, it's arrogant for them to think that people are going to flock to them and come to them with them doing nothing. Like that's actually, if you think about it, that's way worse. Like that's super arrogant. You're not even close to the best in the world. You're not even close to a regular violinist is nowhere near what Joshua Bell was. And if Joshua Bell couldn't get these people, what, what would the average vi- person playing the violin to think that people would stop and applaud and give him money? Like, it's just, it's nuts. It's totally arrogant. And if you can get that, like at a, a mental level, things will change. And that's actually really important. And it really is one of the keys to success as financial advisors. And, and like I said, over the years, I've noticed that these professors of finance are often the least successful because they can crunch numbers, they can recite facts, but they can't get clients, even if their life depended on it. And, and like I said, the sad thing is that these people are genuinely brilliant. They could help a lot of people. They, if they just amped up their marketing, if they just did a little bit more, because the only thing that matters is being able to take prospects and convert them into clients. That's literally it. Nothing else matters. And don't get me wrong. You still have to have skills. You still have to know what you're doing. You know, some people call it skills to pay the bills, <laughs> but that's not enough. The skills are not enough. They will not grow your business. And do you know anyone who focuses on like a particular skill set? Like, do you know anyone who practices like martial arts or something, but they don't like do anything with it? Yeah, the world's full of them. I've got a few in my life. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't have to be like a specific skill set. It could be anything, but these people just, they learn it and don't do anything with it. And it really is sad. They're now, good technicians, right? They're, they're good at the technical part, but they don't know how to sell that. Right. They haven't made the transition from being the doer of their thing to the marketer of their thing. That's and huge. Yeah, it, it is huge. And a lot of people know that. A lot of people get that intellectually. And, and it's so, I don't want to say it's cliche because it's not. But there are a lot of people who say that you need to transition from the doer of your thing to the marketer of your thing. I want to take it a step further. You want to be known for your thing because if you're known for your thing and you go out there and actively market, that it just blows the hinges off everything else. Because if Joshua Bell, obviously he's known as the doer of his thing. And there were some people that walked by and just simply didn't recognize him. Like, they didn't know the music well enough to appreciate that it was played at such a high level, but they, they consciously knew Joshua Bell. They knew who he was. They knew he sold out tickets. So if he was on the street and he had a big sign that says, I'm Joshua Bell, you know, one of the greatest musicians alive, and he was playing the violin, even if he was in a subway wearing like raggedy clothes and he looked like a bum, even if that happened, he would still have got more money. People still would have stopped. They would have said something, you know, because he had marketed himself. He got good at the skill and he got good at, if he got good at the skill and he got good at the marketing, everything would have been different. I promise you. And so many people think as long as they get good at their thing, whatever it is, they think everything would be okay. So it's just mind blowing to me. You, you want to become the marketer of your thing and then you want to be known for what it is that you do. If you work with dentists, I know that's the example that I go with. You want the dental community to know about you and what you do. But at the same time, you want to approach them and you want to make it known that you're ready, able, and willing to make a difference in their life. Because if you can become a good advisor and a good marketer, you'll be unstoppable. Yeah, I think that does. Did you read the E-Myth? Because it, it kind of reminds me of how people break off and do, do these careers, but th- then they just really make a job for themselves because they never grow past the doing the good work to the marketer of the good work. Yeah, I did. I did read the E-Myth a few years ago. 
I faintly remember an example with like the lady with the cupcake business. Yeah. Is that in there? Yeah. yeah. So the lady had, she got really good at the cupcake stuff, I guess. And she thought a business would solve her problems and make her more successful and happier and all the things that people want. But, you know, if I remember correctly, she just spent all day in the cupcake store and just got trapped. And financial advisors, this happens to advisors all the time. They, they get the knowledge, they get the skills, they get the certifications, they get the experience, you know, five years worth, 10 years worth, but they only have one year or two years of marketing experience. They have to go up at the same rate. And I would argue that your marketing, you should actually have your marketing go up faster than your experience because then you'll never have a client problem. You will never, I promise you, you will never have a client or prospect problem if your marketing is better than your experience. Like, you just won't. Now, you may not be able to keep clients if you don't know what the heck you're doing, <laughs> but I'm here to help you get clients. And that's just how you do it. No simpler than that. Good stuff. So what's coming up next time, James? Next time, we're going to talk about how you can make prospecting suck less. That sounds incredible. <laughs> People hate prospecting, so I'm going to make it make it not as sucky. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Another show is in the can. We'll be back in your earbuds next time. Thanks for tuning in. This is the podcastfactory.com.